Hey humans, what's up? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate you so, so much. And I'm really excited about today because today, as usual, I'm going to embarrass myself a little. Okay. We're going to look at some throwback pictures of ways that I used to, um, dress, think I was fashionable. I don't really know what I was doing, but I was doing it. I was wearing those clothes and, uh, it wasn't for me. So we're going to get into that a little bit later, but first I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor and that is HelloFresh. I'm a busy gal, okay? And I know a lot of you out there are really busy too. And I love that HelloFresh is a super, super flexible and time-saving service. It is meals that arrive right to your door, ready to make, and it's an absolute game changer. It's so easy. Basically you go on, you choose your preferences, whether you want vegetarian meals, whether you want meals for four people, two people, how many meals a week you want. It's totally flexible. You choose all that. And then those meals arrive at your doorstep. Even better, there is zero waste because all of the ingredients are portioned exactly to what you need to make those meals. And as someone who lives with one other person, my beautiful girlfriend, Julia, um, we have, have struggled in the past grocery shopping because certain things we want to make require ingredients that you have to buy in larger amounts. They go bad. We end up throwing them out. We feel like terrible people. HelloFresh fixes all of that. On top of that, HelloFresh meals are so delicious. I cannot even tell you. They make me feel like the best chef there is. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I feel such a sense of pride when I make a meal and present it to my girlfriend because I'm the cook in this household, but she does all the laundry, so she makes up for it because it's always delicious. And it's so cool because we also get to try meals that we usually might not try. Last night we made the mushroom rigatoni. It was amazing. It comes with these instruction cards, everything you need to know on the back about making your meal. And I like to keep them just on the off chance I ever decide to remake the meal. I haven't done it yet, but I do have a stack of about a hundred of these in my house <laughs> because they're so good. I always wanna go back to them, but then every week HelloFresh has new meal options on their website to choose. So I just wanna try more. It's great. And like I said, it's so cool trying new things because let's be real, if I didn't have this recipe delivered, I don't think that I would ever try it. Like roasted shawarma chicken and freke. You know when you can't pronounce something that you probably wouldn't have sought it out, but Instead, it was on the website, so I got to choose it because it sounded interesting and it was so good. All the meals take like 30 minutes, so it's perfect for a busy lifestyle. And as much as I like to think I'm an amazing cook, it's questionable. So the fact that I can make every single meal taste delicious is a testament to how easy and uh, reliable HelloFresh instructions are. I also love that HelloFresh continues to give back. They donated over 4 million meals in 2020. That's amazing. And beyond that, they continue to support creators like myself and specifically LGBTQ plus creators like myself, which means a lot. You humans have heard it before, but I cannot recommend HelloFresh enough. Seriously, I love HelloFresh. I can't, I can't recommend it enough. This is more than a sponsorship. I'm obsessed. You can go to HelloFresh.com and enter my code Brianne Williamson 12 to get 12 free meals and free shipping. Did you hear that? You can go to hellofresh.com and enter code Brianne Williamson 12 and you're gonna get 12 free meals plus free shipping. It's a no brainer. All that information is gonna be down in the description below and thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. So let's get into it. She's the one I'm thinking of, hey. I don't know if I am the person to be coming to for fashion advice. So that's not what this is, okay? If you want fashion advice, go check out Jade Fox. <laughs> Today, I wanted to talk specifically about dressing for you. Here's what I mean by that. I feel like I spent the majority of my life 
dressing for other people. And I've talked on this channel about how, and on my podcast actually quite extensively, if you haven't checked out my podcast yet, that'll be linked in the description as well. There's over 125 episodes, quick plug. I've talked about how when I was first coming out, I kind of turned to Tumblr to see people like myself, talk with people like myself, you know, engage with other folks. And it felt safe. It felt like a safe distance from the people in my real life. So yeah, internet friends and seeing people post on Tumblr was a big part of my coming out experience. And I think today that's very similar for a lot of people on platforms like TikTok. So I've talked about Tumblr and how a lot of people used to post outfit pictures or pictures of themselves looking gay. And how at the time I thought that there was only really one way to look gay. And that was unfortunate because I think that there was a lot of years there that I tried to dress like other people on Tumblr that I followed because I thought that was the only way that people were going to see me as valid. And this isn't a feminine or masculine dress sort of debate. I'm talking specifics. Like I thought, you know, wearing a snapback, wearing certain types of sweatpants, wearing boxers, like specific items that certain Tumblr personalities would post them wearing and everyone in the comments would be like, oh my gosh, you could not look more gay. So to me, it taught me that there was a way to look gay. And I wanted to be accepted for who I was. And I think my personal style at that time was very, very different than what a lot of these people online perceived as what a lesbian should look like. And when you're already struggling with your sexuality internally, that can be tough because for me, I was constantly debating, well, if I don't want to wear those sorts of things, or if I don't feel comfortable looking that way, or if I like to look this way, then maybe I'm wrong. I'm already questioning my sexuality. So if externally I don't match these other people that look more androgynous or like to wear these certain things or they skateboard or whatever it might be that now seems ridiculous, it weighed on me a lot. And honestly, when I've talked about that before on my channel or on my podcast, I kind of talked about it like it was a past problem in the sense that I think the world and specifically North America has come a long way in terms of LGBTQ plus rights and acceptance and representation and seeing different types of LGBTQ plus folks with different styles and different ways of expressing themselves and their gender and their sexuality. But then I get on TikTok and there's all these TikTokers with super young fans that are saying and doing the same thing to the point that it's eerie. It's like history repeating itself. You know, I'm seeing a TikToker post and then all the comments being like, oh my gosh, you look so gay. Or a TikToker post and it's like, do I look gay yet? Or like, I don't know when they do the transitions and they're like, oh, you would never know I was gay until, and then they show the outfit that's like stereotypically gay coming out of their work outfit or whatever it may be. It's hard for me to watch because there's nothing wrong with feeling proud of how you are presenting yourself. But I do see a lot of young impressionable people maybe going down the same path that I did of thinking that there's one way to appear gay. And I think especially to present as a lesbian because I can only speak from my personal experience on Tumblr in the past and seeing certain lesbian TikTokers now, but the discussions on fashion and how it relates to sexuality are almost the same. Like, I mean, the fashion's changed, but the discussion about how it relates to how gay you are or how you're perceived as the dominant figure in a relationship because you look more androgynous or you dress more masculine, all those things are still there. And I think it just kind of comes down to an issue with toxic masculinity in the lesbian space, especially in how people present. I mean, I've talked about on my channel before how I had struggles when I first started dating Julia because she was my first girlfriend that was undeniably more androgynous than me. And I was consistently met with questions about whether she switched me or whether, you know, she was the dominant one or the top in the relationship. And it was almost like people were trying to make it in their minds like we were taking on those roles of a man and a woman dating when that's not the case at all. And that all had to do with external appearance 
you know, um, a lot of those people saying those things online had no idea about Julia's personality or the fact that she has a very traditionally feminine uh, personality when it comes to uh, personality traits. So yeah, it goes pretty deep, but I've been thinking about this, but then in the last week I've been doing some spring cleaning and specifically a month ago, I cleaned out all my old stuff at my parents' house and it was literally like a time capsule. And it got me thinking about how I feel like in different ways I've been doing this my whole life until really the last maybe three years. And that is dressing for other people. There is a time in my life when I was in elementary school that I totally dressed for myself. Something specific that comes to mind is I would wear nothing other than tearaway pants. I was obsessed with them. I thought that they made me the fastest while playing tag. And that lasted for years. I wore my hair every single day in a low ponytail like this. I had like three shirts that I would wear. Okay, and my parents would always be like, hey, do you want a different type of pants? Do you wanna try jeans? Do you wanna try this? Like, my mom would be like, do you want me to curl your hair? Do you want me to, you know, do it in a different way? No, I had my one way that I liked to dress and I didn't care that everyone else wore jeans. I didn't care that everyone else wore their hair a different way. I was just doing it for me and what I was comfortable in. That lasted like three years. <laughs> like I stuck to it. Then I got to high school and you know, you're trying to fit in. You're at that age where you just want to be liked. You want to be included. And a big part of that and a big part of my heteronormative lifestyle was trying to impress boys because I thought that's what girls were supposed to do. That was so much a part of the conversation in my friend groups. It was like, what boy do you like? Okay, how do you make him like you back? Oh, are you gonna dress cute for him? Did he mention something about what you dressed like? It was very much expected or ingrained in us that we were supposed to dress to impress guys. So much so that if a guy made fun of a girl's outfit or a certain thing she was wearing, it was very likely that she wouldn't wear that again, which is such a shame that we're putting that power in those like 14 year old boys. So I wanna be clear when I say that I don't think that femininity and dressing feminine makes you any less gay. But for me at that time, I was dressing very feminine to impress boys when that wasn't me. Like if I look at the core of who I was when I was a kid, when I was in elementary school, the way I dressed and how I feel like I wanna present myself now that I'm truly dressing for me, it could not be further from the way that I dressed in high school. Here are some pictures. Yikes, I know. So again, I just wanna clarify that if people like to wear dresses or skirts and they identify as LGBTQ+, that makes them no less gay or no less valid. But again, what I'm bringing it back to is that I was not dressing for me. I was dressing for other people. And for some people watching, that could mean that you are dressing more masculine and not feminine because you're dressing for other people. You're dressing for acceptance within the gay community. So. That can mean different things for different people. Then I was in university and I was consistently told that I had to dress professional and that was drilled into us. I remember numerous times that I'd be doing a presentation and you know my skirt would be just above my knees. Oh, I'm being distracting because my skirt's not long enough even though I fucking killed the presentation. My hair wasn't tied back one day. So my hair was in my face. I don't know what the hell that had to do with me not being professional. My hair just was down and curled. I thought it looked nice and I was told off for that. It was consistently like, you're not gonna get a job. You should wear you should wear professional clothes every day because you never know who you're gonna run into. I think that's BS, honestly. I think that if you are good at what you do and you're passionate about it, that's gonna show through. And I don't know why, um, especially men in the industry get that exception. I'm now in an industry real estate where I see uh, you know, men show up to the office all the time in workout gear or quickly running to showings where they're wearing casual clothes. Not to say they don't also dress formal but as a woman, that to me would be perceived more negatively. And it was definitely the case in business school when I went to university, you know, you were expected to consistently dress professional. What is professional? This is all made up. These are pieces of cloth on our bodies. What is professional? And then through all of that, I was struggling with my sexuality and what it meant to dress gay and looking for insight on Tumblr of how I'm supposed to present gay and how people are gonna know that I'm gay and what's the right way to dress to be gay. And at the end of the day, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. So here's my advice for what it's worth. I want you to think about the way that you dress and the clothes you buy and 
question whether it's for you or if it's for other people, whether that's your teachers, whether that's your pastor, whether that's your parents, whether that's your friends, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your partner, whoever it may be, are you dressing for them or are you dressing for you? It's really cool to be inspired by other people's fashion sense. And if you're looking at something or someone on TikTok and saying, oh my gosh, the way that they're dressed or what they're wearing is inspiring to me because I feel like if I wore that, I'd feel like me, then great. But if you're looking at the feedback they're getting and thinking, if I dress like them, then I would be cool or then I'd be perceived as important or I would be validated for who I am. That's the wrong reasons. You are all perfect just as you are. And however you want to express that externally is totally up to you. And trust me, trust me on this. When you start dressing for you, your life will change because your external confidence will show through. People will appreciate that and you'll feel so grounded in you. So not that you need it, but today I want to give you that validation and say, you can dress however the hell you want and you're still you. Humans, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe, give it a like and comment down below. Thanks so much again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. And until next time, see you later. Is that how I usually close out? I don't think so, but that's what it's gonna be today. Bye.